Hi there. So, uh, where we this is going to be a continuation of a previous episode where we had just been looking at a bug, um, or rather a mirror transformation uh, for issue six two nine five eight, where I was experimenting with adding a special um, new transformation, and it's one where I am now doing. Uh, if I go to mirror transform, we'll see inside of here that I've added this new up far to local prop transformation. It's short. It's like 60 lines long um, because it doesn't have an analysis to ensure soundness. It's just doing a blind transformation of the code based on a dash Z flag being passed in and then searching for a very, very specific pattern of looking for local three. And if it can find it, then it's going to replace it with a projection of um, the self arc projecting down to dot zero and doing that replacement everywhere it could find a local three. And the conclusion that we hit when we were looking at this in the previous episode was that installing this transformation, which to be clear, um, it's currently controlled by this dash Z flag right here, dash Z mirror up far to local prop. Uh, if we don't pass that, this code will compile the way it did before. But if we do pass that, then we get an ICE, an uh, internal compiler error. And the question is, why? What is happening here that is causing this ICE to occur? And this is an opportunity to us to investigate ways to um, learn more about ICEs and how to figure out what's going wrong in the compiler in a case like this. So. The problem itself is happening with this call to layout um, where we are doing, when we encounter a, t a tuple tie here, so we're doing field tire layout and it's doing, we're in the context of a match of this dot tie, the kind, the kind is just the, the particular variant of tie that we're looking at. And so when we hit a tuple, then we look then we return, okay, extract out the tuple. Wait, that can't be right. There's ties I here. What is the context of that I? All right, let's actually look care more carefully at this. This I is gotten here. Okay, we're inside of field tie or layout and And so from there, we're gonna say, okay, pull out the if type from the ties that, would get, that are attached to the tuple, okay? And again, this is coming from that tie kind call here. And that's associated with this. Now, it'd be good to know what we're actually looking at to give us some context. <clears throat> and as you may remember, I tried to get the compilation to be pretty fast here. So if I just do a build right now, it's going to go pretty fast because I haven't modified anything. So the very first thing we should try to do perhaps is to actually uh, inspect this type, what these inputs are. What is the actual type that we've been given? And what is the um, index that we're looking at? So how do we print out a type? So the most in Rust, the usual kind of pattern for this situation is to have some sort of debug formatting machinery for your uh, the types that you're interested in. So we could just say, look, let's just try printing out every time we call field time layout. Let's print out what the uh, what the, this argument is. We'll ignore the CX and but we'll print out the the I as well. Okay, and if we do that, what happens? So. It's something where it's going to tell us, oh, it's going to complain, saying you don't have an implementation of display for tie and layout. And this is because I used this format of the format specifier where I didn't, didn't include, I, I have the curly braces and then the variable name saying which thing I want to print, but I didn't give a format specifier, which means it defaults to the display type standard format display. That's what it's complaining about. So if I add the only question mark there to say, no, no, I want the debug formatting machinery. I want to see what it looks like uh, according to the implementation of the debug formatter and see if you can build like that. So 
that looks like it probably went through because uh, this is this layout code is inside of Rusty Middle and looks like that compiled successfully. Great. So hopefully the debug formatting for types is readable. Uh, I haven't looked at it recently, but I'm hoping it's readable. Otherwise, if it's not, then we'll have to do some kind of other printing to take a look at it. But this will at least get us started with something to look at. Um, and let's keep in mind that the actual bug here was something that it said index out of bounds. Len is zero, but the index is zero. So my guess is that uh, when we print this thing out, we're probably going to see an empty sequence here. I think it's null, as in it's a tuple with uh, no ties in it at all, which doesn't sound great. That sounds like something that could be problematic. Um, I am trying to remember right now whether um, whether the tuple is when it's empty, if that represents a unit or not. Because we rewrite in Rust, when we write a tuple, we write it like um, we write a tuple like A, B, C, that's a tuple type with those three types in it. And as a special case, um, there's a couple of special cases. One is a unary tuple that has a single thing inside of it. It's written like this with a trailing comma. That's because we use a parentheses with no commas as a grouping operation. So this is a tuple, a unary tuple, and this is just A on its own. That's the first special case. The second special case is that when you have no nothing inside the tuple, then this is the so-called unit type that has no contents. Um, a zero size type. One of many zero size types. This one is special in that it's given first class support in the compiler. Um, and the thing I'm trying to remember that I can't recall off the top of my head is whether we if we represent actual units as just empty tuples in the compiler or not. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, so we'll find out. So let's see what happens now when we run this thing. So the first thing is that we're actually not going to see any new output here because I forgot to turn on the C logging for that particular module we were looking at. So let's change that. The module we are inside of was layout.rs, which is inside of the rusty middle source tie. So if we say rusty middle tie oops, layout, we add that to our logging machinery. Now we see a lot more output. In particular, oops, right before the ice, ice backtrace is there. Here is the last call we see the debug statement where it's calling field tire layout. And as we perhaps could, predict, could have predicted, the tie is indeed unit. And it's got this other layout information associated with it. And we've got this attempt to do a dereference of zero here. So uh, that's that's worrisome, right? That's something where we're attempting to do a lookup of the dot zero element on something that's empty. So uh, the most obvious thing that might be going on here is that our up bar transformation, it's trying to add a dereference of zero on something that actually doesn't have the right type for it. And um, my assumption here is that the self arg would always have an appropriate type to do this dereference, but maybe that's not the case in all contexts. Um, in particular, you know, I'm doing this transformation blindly saying, oh, for every local, we have local three. But we, I don't know what code we're visiting inside of this, this call right now. This could easily be um, an item. In particular, this transformation was meant to be applied to the code that gets run when we're compiling the input here, x1a. So my intention was that we would be applying this transformation only to X1A. That's partly why I had that whole dash Z flag thing. But other stuff gets compiled when you run even a compiling a single file like this. It's quite possible that we're actually running this, this same transformation on some other piece of mirror. Um, we could be running it. it. It has to be a piece of mirror that has local three in it because that's part of the whole precondition for this thing to run is that we have to have a local 
who's pl a, a place whose local has index three. But there might be cases like that that have a self arg that have a, have a or self arg is just underscore one, just the first local that doesn't have the right type to do this projection. So what's a way we can figure that out? What can we figure? How can we figure out what context we're in right now uh, of this call to lay out? Well, um, so the TCX probably includes information that's relevant here. Uh, like the global context, and that has various information about the here that we're looking at, and the session. Well, the session is like a global information about the whole compilation process. So that's that's not necessarily what we want to look at here. Um, what I'm really curious about is whether there's an, an easy way for me to say, look, what is the current function that we're trying to compile, compile right now? Um, and I'm having trouble remembering off the top of my head a way one would look that up. Um, another way to do this would actually be to say, look, instead of, we could, we could try printing out information every time we do this transformation to ensure that we find out every place it's applied. That might be another way to go here. So there's two ways, basically there's two approaches I can imagine here. One is to guess that the problem has something to do with where we're doing our transformation itself, because that's, that seems almost certainly the problem here, that this transformation is malformed and try to find out more information about how um, when it's being applied and where it's being applied. In particular, we actually we actually know that, I, I realize now, even from the information we were putting out before, there was those trace calls. If we So we had these, both this tie layout and this up bar to local prop information. So if we go back to the previous, just the up bar to local prop logging, we saw the trace run on several things. It's saying running up bar to local prop on mere source, it says it for several cases here. Namely, it says it for uh, wait, I think it's the right way on mere source. So it says it four times. It says it here for the the constant zero in the test function for the next one a, which um, so inside of the test there's a constant. I assume that's talking about this 8192 here. I'm not 100% sure of that, but it seems pretty likely. Um, there's also a constant set of main. Again, I'm thinking, but I'm not certain that that's the 8190, what 8192 here. If I said 8190, I meant 8192 before. Okay. Um, and then here it's on on main itself, right there. And then the closure inside of test, we were just talking about, we talked about this in the previous video, about how there's a, that's actually the generator, I believe, that's created, um, because async functions desugar into a normal function that itself has within it a generator expression, which is written like closure in this code here. On mere, and then there's on mere source, um, the closure for weight, that's what this one is here. Okay. And there's on mere source main. Um, I guess we do this twice because uh, it's a, there's a promoted thing that we're um, including here, I think. There's, there's expressions that get promoted to, um, static values outside of the current compilation unit. This is in test. See, so now, I'm, now I'm wondering, actually, the fact that I'm seeing test occur twice. No, just once. We compiled the closure first. I see. We did the, um, the, the transformation on the closure, and now we're doing it on test itself here. And that's all the cases, actually. So all the cases are originating from... Uh, these pieces of code, but I can easily imagine, for example, perhaps main has a local three inside of it. In fact, we could probably look at the mirror dump here. And I mean, even if we just grep for underscore three in the mirror files, 
we'll see cases of it. Um, so there's test closure, like we saw before, and a lot of cases of test closure. If I jump to the end, though, um, look, there's an underscore three here on the await closure. So, and then on the main closure, there's an underscore three. So it's not surprising at all, in fact, that we have problems here. Uh, in this particular case, for the wait closure, there's a dot one here. Um, and it's a pin, so it has actually, this will have something, a, a piece of structure you can project out of, so that might not be the place where the complaint is coming from. That's not sure, I'm not sure yet. Um, and then the other place we were just looking at a moment ago was ex1a main. Ah, see, in this case, we have an underscore three, and there's an underscore one right there. That's a, that's that's a uh, unit expression. So the point is, it was at the very least um, questionable to be applying this transformation bl totally blindly with no justification at all, because we're getting caught into things like, oh, there's an underscore one here that's not even the right shape to for what you're talking about, and surprise, surprise. <laughs> There's not going to be anything of the form um, that looks like an under, underscore three equals underscore one dot zero in this code. Compare that to uh, the, the actual code that we were interested in modifying, the closure code. Um, which is, um, I'm trying to remember what, which file I need to look at here. Actually, the easiest thing to do is probably just pull out the one I already loaded. It's, uh, right, up part of local property four is probably the best thing to look at here. Because this is before our transformation runs in the case that we're looking at. The point I'm trying to make is that this is the initialization that we were using to sort of justify that we were using as the basis for saying, oh, look, we have an underscore three and it's going to get underscore one dot zero assigned from it. But that like, we haven't even checked to see if this assignment statement exists in our analysis, in our, in our, before doing the transformation itself. And so that's why we're hitting cases like EX1A main, uh, where we're, where this underscore three isn't being assigned from underscore one dot zero underscore one doesn't even occur as an input this to this expression here this this underscore three is being assigned from a procedure call that takes an underscore four underscore eight as inputs underscore one is involved in something totally different uh much earlier i imagine um I might not even be able to find it quickly. We'll see. Storage life underscore one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to find it may not be a good use of time right now because um, there's all this other code that's doing stuff with underscore. I'm curious now whether underscore one is like not even used in this code. Oh, there it is. There's underscore one. Well, of course, it's, it's uh... a. <laughs> right. It's a. Uh... It's nothing at all. We already established it's unit. It's it's just a silly thing. Who even knows where it came from? Um, okay. The point is, the point is, uh, it didn't take too much. Uh, it, it it probably would have been interesting to try to do the exercise of figuring out from the layout code, like what was going wrong here. But it's faster in this particular case for us to just realize, look, our problem is clearly in our original transformation, and it's being too aggressive. So how can we fix that? Well, we can certainly just say we aren't going to run the transformation. Um, like here, it was saying, oh, let's let's find out if there's a local three. If it is, then we will run the transformation blindly. And that's not really a good justification. Um, 
a simpler thing, a pretty simple, sorry, a simple way to generalize this slightly would be in addition to looking for local three, to scan the body to find out if there is a single assignment to underscore three from the exact um, projection underscore one dot zero. If we can find an exactly one assignment statement to underscore three, and if its right hand side looks like the thing we're looking for, then that's a pretty strong hint that this is the kind of thing where we want to apply our transformation. Again, I, I can't say this strongly enough. Uh, my goal is to get a transformation that I can apply blindly just to validate that this transformation actually will fix the space blow up problem that I described in the previous episode. I am not intending to land something that is going to be this naive for running in the compiler in the long term. Although it's, it's possible that something close to the level of naivete that I'm describing would, uh, could actually be employed. Um, but right now, my goal is just to do proof of concept. Can this transformation fix the problem at hand? So uh, I'm going to try changing the code here so that it will, you know, after it establishes that it can find um, that there is an underscore three inside of the body of this mirror, now it's going to uh, search in that body for exactly one statement of the form underscore three. So yeah, search for exactly one statement of the form underscore three gets underscore one dot zero. Um, if we can find Find that we'll apply the transformation, otherwise, we'll bail on the transformation. Okay, so um, what's a good way to look for this, this assignment statement? Um, I think it would be reasonable for us to actually go ahead and um, use another visitor for this. Perhaps the point of the visitor is that it'll search, it'll, it'll iterate over the, all the mirror, and I could write this by hand, that's the other way to go, is just to iterate over the mirror um, ourselves, because in this case, we saw earlier, in fact, uh, so the, the reason why I'm having a debate here is because we did see examples, for example, in the remove storage markers mar optimization, where you can see that, in fact, uh, the act of searching through all the statements is a pretty simple um, loop where it's it's at best a like nested grouping of two of two for loops um and that you know that might be okay it, it's it's something where this a visitor is gonna be you know somewhat robust and it'll be very focused and saying oh once you actually write the code down for doing the visitor code it'll be a matter of saying okay visit each statement but before we do that let's just try let me just show you what the code looks like uh, for doing this, um, so basic blocks is this kind of structure here, but it's got all this stuff. It's this stuff is all private pieces of state. So it's got these ways of doing various queries on the basic blocks. And in particular, you can say, look, I want either a mutable reference to the basic blocks, um, but is there a way to say I want an immutable reference? Because I don't really care to get, ah, there's a DREF. The DREF will give us the, uh, the inner thing. So, okay, in that case, um, just doing this, I think, will suffice for getting out the blocks. Can even say it this way. And then within the basic block itself, hmm, that's interesting. It doesn't have a definition for basic block. Oh, it's probably because, oh yeah. So the th this is, I've, I've spoken on this pattern before. Um, basic block here 
is a uh, index type. So if we search for basic lock, we'll find it as a structured um, use of the index new type index macro. Right there. Um, for some reason, this formatting is not being printed nicely, which is unfortunate. I don't know why that's the case, why it's printing so weirdly there. It might be that Rust Analyzer might be having problems expanding this code for some reason. Um, but it's this is a just an instance of a the new type index macro, which uh, yeah, it, it's it's making a simple wrapper around an uh, an index type a, a, a number. It's just a number. And so you really want the data for the basic block itself. You have to do a query to get that information. So, and that information is, although is that <coughs> the index spec actually, now that I think about it, has operations to get that kind of information. Um, like a for loop like this on an index spec, I believe there's ways to query this to say I want to get out the uh, yeah there's into it or enumerated that'll give you the basic block and the data associated with it I believe this or it or enumerated right there um, yes so I think that's what we want to do and what this will do then is it'll give us the index, it'll give us a series of tuples where the left hand side of the tuple is the index and the right hand tuple is the data. Okay. And what is the data in the question here? It is the basic block data. And what is the basic block data? It's the statements. So we can say for each statement in DB data statements. Because we don't, we're only going to be looking for the statements themselves um, to find that assignment we're looking for. Remember, we're just looking for something of the form underscore three equals underscore one dot zero. And I happen to know uh, that terminators never look like that. Terminators um, always end a basic block and they look like either go to or a switch, which is how we implement match by switching on the discriminants or a resume, which basically is our, our way we unwind after a panic, or an abort, which means that we just quit after a panic, or a return from a function, or something that can never actually be run, um, or a drop, um, where there's a couple different ways of handling um, drop code, or a call expression. So there's lots of things that can be, the, the terminator that is, but, one thing it, or yield, there's all the things the terminator can be, but it's never going to be that kind of assignment statement that I was showing a moment ago. And we're just trying to find this assignment, this assignment on its own. Oh, well, okay. Uh, so let me finish this task and then I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I'll point out the other thing that, that might be a problematic here. Um, well, or yeah. So, I just note to myself for anything else. Okay, so for every statement, uh, hmm, it seems that my uh, codes got confused about where things are. Okay. I don't know why it's LSP is not happy with me right now. Okay, there we go. So, as I was saying a moment ago, we've got statements, and what's a statement? Well, it's got the span of the statement, the source information associated with it, that is. And then it's got the kind. So if we look at the kind, 
make a statement. There are several kinds of statements, but the one we care most about are assignment. It's an assignment that looks at the kind of assignment we're looking for. There's also other kinds of statements like fake reads, um, which is something that we inject to basically mark the idea that something needs to be inspectable um, to ensure that you don't have, don't allow other stuff to sort of interfere. Um, and set discriminants, which is how you model the modification of a, of a discriminant in an enumeration. Um, ways to say I want to uninitialize state or mark state as being live or dead. Um, Retagging some that detail with stack borrows model that we have for, for the operation semantics of Miri, a type description, a coverage marker, intrinsic, no op. There's really very few kinds of statements. This is this is a remarkably um, like and so much of it is metadata, right? Like or can be eliminated entirely. Like fake reads are not part of the dynamic semantics. This is a no-op at runtime. Uh, and you can imagine that DNA is also a no-op at runtime. Storage live and storage dead are, again, no-ops at runtime. Retag doesn't even exist except for Miri. A type description is a no-op at runtime. So there's so much stuff here that's a no-op at runtime, um, as well as an outright no-op. But the thing that definitely is not a no-op is an assignment. Okay, so this is the kind of thing we're looking for. We're looking for a and it has a left hand side. It's a box with the left hand side and the right hand side. Um, so we'll do it this way. I was debating about using a box pattern here. That's why I paused. There's a box pattern form I could have tried to use, but I, I don't feel like getting to that right now. Um, okay, this seems plausible. I don't know why it's not rendering the let with a nice color. <laughs> it makes me think something's wrong, but I don't know what's wrong. Okay, well, I'll just, should I plunge ahead or should I try to compile this to see why it's not coloring it? Oh, I don't have a mirror. Um, okay, that, okay, sure, I already imported all of mirror. There we go, that's better. So, um, so, where were we? Um, I want to look at that statement kind again. So there's a place on the left and an R value on the right. And the whole point here is that I want to say, in fact, I could have done this as a match. I think I want to say if let again, or do I say match? Um, let's go ahead and say match. If I match A0 and A1, So, a place on the left and the right hand side on the right. And I want the place local index to be three. I want the projection to be empty. This is, see, I'm, I'm already writing a big if statement. Maybe I should be better off. You know what? I think I'm better off just doing it like this. Um, so how do I ask this for its leg? Oh, I just say it's empty. Oh no, that's a constructor. That's not a, that's not a uh, predicate. Okay, so if I have an empty projection and the local is three and the, the right-hand side local index is one, or if it's the self type, I guess I could, I could say it that way, right? There's a self arg that I'm using somewhere else in this code, which I'm pretty sure is a local. 
Yeah. And the projection in this case, though, needs to be the, uh, I don't want the land to be zero for that. I want it to be a unary projection that has, um, right, this special projection um, field, field new zero. Oh, and I have to get the type out again. <coughs> do I have that available already in this code? I do. I have that. Thank goodness. This is in the context of, in fact, if I'm already using this. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I extracted out the type for local for local three already. So let's use that again. Um, okay. So I've got my conditions here, namely, if I find a single statement and I, it all matches, then I can say I found the statement. So Okay, so uh, this is the goal as it, well, it's not the goal. I haven't actually made my goal yet, but this is an approximation of the goal I was describing earlier. In particular, um, now we have code that actually is looking for the statement of the form. I, I think, I haven't compiled this yet, so I don't actually know if that's a job, but it, it's plausible. Um, but now I want to come back and make a note about failure modes. So first of all, I said exactly one statement of the form of this form. Uh, I'd be a little nervous if I saw multiple statements um, of this form. But moreover, I, in fact, would be nervous if I saw, even more worrisome would be if I saw multiple statements that assigned to underscore three and any of them didn't match this. So um, let's, let's actually double check for that too. So now we're going to do something a little bit um, more careful here. So we're going to first say if the local is three, and then we're going to have two conditions. There's one case where if we if we're in a local three, but it's all of the cases that we care about. Yeah. So in fact. Yeah, there's there's no way to frame the, to phrase this more crisply up here to be like exactly one statement that writes zeros for three and it takes the form. Yeah, but let's let's let's, let's write that. Let's if we find exactly one statement, if we find exactly one assignment two underscore three and it is of the form this, then we will apply the transformation. That's a better framing of what we're talking about. So. Yeah, so if there's another right to underscore three at any projection level at whatsoever, um, which this is including projections that I think, it might be overly conservative what I'm about to describe, but basically if we have a right to underscore three and it doesn't um, match these other conditions, then we're gonna say we found another right to it. So with these conditions here, then it seems like we've found something that is roughly of the, roughly meets the criteria we've written here. Now, this still isn't correct. This still has other failure cases that are really important to cover, um, but it's plausible. Like this is gonna be closer to what we need than the thing we had before, which was just causing the compiler to internally error. So if we can find the statement itself, and we don't find on the other rights of the local, then we do the transformation is the idea. And otherwise we do nothing. Okay, let's try this now. Oh, 
doesn't like that. Um, so what's the problem? Oh, it's an R value. That's not a local. It's an R. That's that's not a place. Um, the the, the, the left hand side of an assign the right hand side of an assignment. So the problem here. Is that the left, the right hand side of a sum is an R value. An R value can look like lots of different things. It could be like there's lots of different cases of things that can occur on the right hand side of a um, assignment. But I'm pretty sure the one we care about is an operand that's either a copy or a move. Um, these are the two, I think those are the main cases that we care about here. So let's fix that. Um, so if the local is an operand, how do I say that? Assign, yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to, I don't, I wonder if the compiler has the let syntax turned on yet. Um, there's this whole thing about having conditional let operations. And so I could, in theory, write R value use um, operand. Well, Then, if that's the case, then uh, and then we can now start asking questions of the operand itself. Like, um, is the operand? Can I just ask? I guess it could be either a move or a copy. This is where we get to the point that it's, we're probably actually better off putting this code into an if let, just because I don't want to deal with the scoping issues there. I don't think. Um, and then if operand all this stuff is trying to do a very careful thing of, but, of, of figuring out if we're looking at the right thing we want or not. Um, Sorry, I, I'm just realizing I should clear. I should make this clear about what the goal is and like what the, what the make up this code is. So let the um, found um, desired right hand side is one boolean we'll have, and then okay. So if we match the operand, there's two kinds of operands. There's a copy operand which has a place. And there's a move operand that takes a place. I'm a little nervous about the fact that these are not being indented properly. What did I do wrong there? Hmm. Not sure. I'm not sure why it's complaining about my indentation there. I was trying to figure out why this code wasn't uh, indenting properly. I still don't know. This is really strange. Um, it's also complaining about operand here. I wonder if this is not an enum. I had thought it was. Oh, maybe it's like someone has to do dereference the kind. Let's see, operand. Nope, it's an enum. That's weird. Okay, well, um, okay, that's, that's super odd. Um, is it because it's not bound the way I think it is? Uh, oh, oh, I have to borrow this. Maybe that's part of why. At least I thought I had to borrow it. Well, let's uh, let's just keep going, I guess. Let's see if I can figure out. Oh, that, that is going to bother me, though. That 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 indentation's so weird. Oh, there's definitely something weird going on here. Okay, what's happening here? It's got the if here. And this opens this. Why, why did that match that? All right, is my Emacs just totally messed up here? Why does Emacs think that that's matching that? Uh, 
this is an iflet on this thing. <coughs> let's just stop there for a second. Let's 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 see if this at least compiles. Um, if it's a projection whose length is zero, a zero subjection length is zero. We're going to do some work on the on the operand to figure out what it's supposed to look like. We'll come this out for now. See, even that's not right. What's going on here? Oh, maybe his rust mode is all screwy for the moment. Okay, well. Point is, there's going to be something where I'm trying to say whether I found the desired right hand side or not. And it should be a matchup operand. All right, now it's going to be okay with what I'm doing. It's going to be either a copy of a place or a move of a place. And as it turns out, I don't care which one, which case I'm in. If that's the case I'm in, then I want to handle it. And again, this is really funky. Whoa. Okay, let's just handle that that way. That is so goofy. Like, there's something really wrong with my rust mode. I wonder if there's some other piece of machinery that's, that's interacting badly here. Okay. The uh, third case for an operand is when it's a constant. And for that, I'm going to treat that as some, a case that I don't match on. Wow, something is really, really not right with my Emacs. Oh, I hope I can finish this coding without that hitting me too many more times. Um, if it's a place, then I want to look at the local index, confirm that it's one, and I want to confirm that, sorry, I want to look at the place index and the place projection. that it looks like the kind of projection I want to see. Both those conditions hold. Then I found the kind of thing I want to find. And otherwise. So one thing I'm doing here, um, there's, there's two, a couple of different ways to handle this. Uh, there one way to handle it is to say, look, let's make the this thing uninitialized, and then we'll be forced to sort of consider. I'll, the compiler will force us to write down explicitly for every case um, whether it's the case we care about or not. In this kind of code, though, when it's only one single path that leads to the case that you care about, it's probably a better. It's a reasonable thing to say. Look, we'll we'll start with it set to the um, unfound case. And then everything else will leave it un unchanged. Um, it's much it's much like how we handle the kind of code we saw above, where we were looking for um, the loop for founding the statement here, right? We do the same thing of first setting the thing to the unfound, and then and then looking for the needle in the haystack. So, okay, if we find the desired right hand side, and we're if we're looking at the lo the projection, if we're looking at local three on the right hand side. And if it's projection zero, um, there are all these things are cases of like, first see if it looks like underscore three equals dot underscore one dot zero. And if it does, we sit in if so set
Okay. So if we're looking at local three and and we found our desired right hand side, then we're gonna say we found our statement. If we're looking at local three and we haven't found our desired right hand side, it's it's more general than desired right hand side, in fact. It's it's because it's also checking that it's that there's no projection state beyond like it's assigning the whole underscore three. So let's actually just call this desired assignment. But if we didn't find the desired assignment, and it's got, or hold on, is this the right pace? Yeah. So we're right here, we're still in the case we're looking at underscore three. If we found the desired assignment here, then we say found statement equals true. And if it, we didn't find the desired assignment, then we found something else that's running to some part of underscore three. And so that's another right to this local, and we're just gonna set that to true. Okay. Okay. And with all that in place now, we get down here. If we found the statement we want and we didn't find other rights to the local, then we're going to um, do the transformation. All right. Uh, we ended up not using the BB here, which means we could probably just use iter instead of iter enumerated, but it's not, for now, it's not expensive to leave that code the way it is. Ah, but that needs to change. We need to borrow there. Okay, good. Um, so the other failure mode I want to mention here is that, in particular, we're looking for exactly one assignment underscore three. But the other case that we really need to worry about here is what if there's modifications underscore one or even reads of underscore one other than this one. That is another case that. That's, the, that's an example of the kind of thing that when we actually put the proper analysis in, um, we need to do that kind of analysis to ensure that there's no other um, rights underscore one and that there's no, or not any rights at all to underscore one, I think. We'll have to double check that in terms of way that, what this mirror is analyzing. And that there's no reads from underscore one except for this assignment statement that we're very precisely looking for. Um, but we're going to move blindly ahead and not worry about that yet. Hey, look, look at that. It didn't ice. It didn't ice. Great. So let's dump the mirror now. Let's see what that looks like. Um, so if I dump all the mirror, in particular, there's a couple different things I want to look at. Um, I want to see what, first of all, we want to look at what our code actually, what our transformation actually did. Um, so there's the before and the after for up bar to local prop, right? This is the top buffer is here. I'm going to put these side by side. Uh, am I going to put them side by side or top and bottom? Um, this is this code's wide enough that I'll do top and bottom. Okay. We can do a diff of these two pieces of code. No, I don't end up doing side by side anyway. We can do top and bottom. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is the constant. This is not the one I wanted to see, um, right? This is this is this is ex one a test constant. That's not what I want. I want closure, um, and then I want to look at up bar to local prop on the closure. But this is dot wait. So again, we want a different piece of code. We want dot test, right? And then we want closure, and we want up bar test closure up bar before, and then. Test closure up bar after. Let's do a different these. Okay, so first change. 
now there's a debug statement of some kind that's telling us map arg to three from step map arg to three map arg to underscore one dot zero. I don't know if that's going to work. That might break our debug info, or maybe it's fine. I don't know. I'm hoping that given that it supported having that in a place, that it's not going to break anything. Here we have a um, assignment from uh, assignment into underscore one dot zero from underscore one dot zero. Definitely dumb, but um, not break. It won't break anything outright. And here we have perhaps the most important transformation of what that we want to see here. The use of underscore three has been um, replaced with a use of underscore one dot zero. Great. So what does that mean then in terms of our code? Um, well something's wrong now. My buffer has totally gone. All right, now I'm going to pause the recording and fix this buffer situation. Okay, apparently my uh, my whole Emacs session um, crashed. I had to quickly restash, restore some state. Um, so let's, uh, let's see. So the next thing I wanted to see here, now that we've sort of verified that the transformation does something plausibly right, uh, it, not smart, it's definitely including some dumb stuff, right? We saw in particular that, that bit about assigning uh, into the same array from the same array is very dumb. Uh, uh, the other problem that I think potentially is the storage live markers for underscore three haven't gone away. Um, so, but before I worry about fixing that, let's see what happened to the layout of the code with this change in place. So with this transformation, um, I can turn off the logging and let's see what, what this, let's just try running the code. <gasps> Did you see that? Did you see that? I, I didn't. I didn't establish the context again. But look, it works. Holy cow! It works. That's amazing. See, the the, the point is that without the tr without the transformation, um, this code is has a sixteen kilobyte future on it. This this bit here, this mem size of val, where it passes an eight kilobyte array, ends up having a sixteen kilobyte future. But with the transformation turned on that I just added, it produces a roughly eight kilobyte future. That's that's that demonstrates this fixes the problem. This fix is viable, and with that, we are in a great state to actually work on um, making this analysis more robust. But um, Hopefully this has been informative. All right, I'm going to stop there and so this is very exciting.